Hello, my name is Stephen Monkey Mason and welcome to Lonely Tree Entertainment and this is an epic rant about Corey Feldman. Big box VHS. Big box. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is not only did I do Corey Game last month, this came today. But you're gonna have to wait and I'm gonna have to wait till the very end of this video to find out what's in there. Now, this is pretty unplanned and unscripted. Um, there's all sorts going on around here. Right. So not to repeat myself but give you the rough thing i basically discovered corey fellman in early films like the gremlins the goonies you know he's the voice of donatello all the burbs the lost boys and then discovery of corey fellman i discovered corey him and i always thought they were a cool combination and to me being a vhs collector and a movie collector um it's the hunt um just a hunter back in the day now i want to talk about living in england and in new zealand in this rant and the discovery behind us I believe I have a few more um, him than Fellman's, but I'm going to have a massive rant down memory lane here. Now, Hyra might appear in a bit. You can hear her in the background. Hyra! Hyra! I can hear you. Anyway, so you can hear her in the background. She's just chewing her toy. Okay, so it's, this is new. Hyra's just new. <laughs> Less than a week old <laughs> to the house. So again, might have to train her a bit. But wait, anyway, first up, big box. Now, Thelman stuff's hard to get a hold of. And that is a big box of The Gremlins. The first movie i ever seen the pictures in the Isle of Man. Um, just get the crap out of us. Um, Warner Brothers big box, we're here, you know, because obviously on a lot of the reissues, it's we're back, you know, and VHS has got redone. Big synopsis of the movie, The Gremlins singing Christmas carols on the back. Um, basically has stripes smashing through. I stripe in the corner. Um, with a permanent marker, and that's what's on the Lonely Tree wall out in the hallway there as well. But I love the original artwork, which is on the back of the Steelbook, the first edition. I think there's like three or four Steelbooks now, but nice collection that. That was an eBay buy. I never had that as a young kid on that. It's Moldy's out, but it wasn't expensive. Um, obviously, I've got so many. I mean, you just have to go on Lonely Tree Entertainment and see how many different versions of the Gremlins I do own. Ones with speller mistakes, different colours, Christmas covers. DVD, Blu-ray, UMDs, laser discs, the whole whack and caboodle. In fact, the laser disc is just like that. Now, I might as well, since it's there, have a quick look at the laser discs. Jammed my finger on the door a few weeks ago. I wasn't trying to flip you the bird there, um, but yeah, not. Burbs, um, Japanese laser disc. Rock and roll high school, hired down forever. Um, last resort. Um, watches, it's him. All the bullets here, just one of the girls here. That's what we're on about, Gremlins. But before we get there, we've got Red Line, um, which is the only way physically I've ever seen um, Red Line available. And then Dream a Little Dream at the very end. So, yeah, Red Line's a weird one actually because I watched it on Amazon Prime and it looks like Feldman's just walked off the film of Dream a Little Dream 2 into that along with Michael Madsen. Um, and it popped up in laser disc one day. It's the only physical media I've ever seen of it. But yeah, go back to Gremlins there. There you go. Warner Brothers home video, we're back. So we're here, we're back. Um, obviously this would have come on years later and the evolution of laser discs. Really cool artwork, I think. I think the laser disc, which is over there, the Gremlins 2 is awesome. Um, to say, main film in Fellman is Pete. I always thought Fellman should have been in the sequel. I think Pete coming to New York uh, makes more sense than the Fuddermans. I know Joe Dante has got a massive love for, um, Christ, what's it, Dick Miller. Um, but obviously, he also had a massive love for Feldman as well, and I just thought, you know, Feldman was missing from the sequel. But yeah, Gremlins is the first one. And a nice introduction here. So yeah, see Gremlins at the pictures, and there we go. Right, next up, I do not own a copy. And I've tried to put these in order. I probably haven't just been as strict um, as the Hame one, because um, I found myself quite baffled by him. I, I could have sworn. That, like Pray the Roller Boys was after Dream Machine, but IMDB says not, and I'm sure it is. And I'm like, <laughs> anyway, um, the Goonies. I refuse to buy an eBay Goonies, and there's a few on there. I've seen them up to a hundred pound. So I've got two versions of big box Goonies. Um, one is Die Goonies, and this is an American. So we've got an American one, and we've got a German one. Now I got that off Charlie. 
back in the days when I used to have time to be part of groups on Facebook. I just haven't got enough time for multi groups and stuff. Like it's you upset somebody about a VHS and you're gonna know about it. <laughs> it's just like come on, man. It's a VHS. Um, I see that's the Die Goonies one, and um, the artwork's very similar. And um, this artwork's been. You know the old juice juice and it's all been like shrunk down and stuff like that um the goonies is just i'm looking at one i want to find one i refuse to buy the holy grails like looking for stuff like jaws i know and the shining um i just refuse to pay a big prices on stuff like that so goonies is definitely a one on the wish list um as i say it's a big spongy one so it doesn't feel like it's out of place it comes warner brothers it just says die goonies instead of the goonies um, I can't even diss David Johnson as well, because he's finally seen, I mean look at that one, he's finally seen the Goonies, you know, for years, Sluggy hadn't seen the Goonies, and then a girl made him watch it. But yeah, so that's the Goonies. A big shout out to Richard Donner, God bless him, I want to miss. Right, next up is someone I did bow down to, and um, this is birthday present of my mum this year. I don't know how many times I'll butcher and say my mum throughout my collection when I was younger when it comes to big box VHS's um, and collections and stuff like that um, I recently seen some video footage and I'm not putting it in this video um, of my old room and I was just like ah oh, because I didn't really want to like start the tape no jump cutting Stephen end it there done dusted actually there probably will be um, one edit but I'll try and make that at the very end <laughs> the very end so this is a new um, I recently did um, an unboxing for this Running around some memory lane footage for me. Um, it's it's in lovely condition. It's an ICA red box version of Stand By Me coming soon. Platoon, you just know it's old. Um, this has just been looked after from day one. This is absolutely an extreme edition. Was on fifty quid on eBay. Uh, the guy went down. I think finally to thirty pound postage, which I, like that's fine because of what that is. You just don't see them around for years. I've just had the the ones. Where again, it's them running away from the train. I don't think Stand By Me had a really good cover back then. Um, this is good enough. You don't need the train in it. Um, I'm not a big fan of the floating head syndrome. I think the best version of Stand By Me we've ever got is the Steelbook. The Steelbook and the recent more 4K ones of just the guys walking down the train tracks with the backs of them. I think that's just class. That's just literally what it always should have been. So that's one which, you know, has evolved into a better. But that's lovely. Very rare to see it. Right, next up, License to Drive. Um, big box at UK. License to Drive has appeared loads of times down the channel. Um, there's loads of different videos. Um, the big box New Zealand version is in the other room on the wall. Uh, when I found it in New Zealand last year, I stuck to a wall. Um, recently rewatched it as well. Um, at the moment, there's a video coming out where I watched License to Drive and I think I watched Last Resort back to back when I was out and drinking one night and I was just howling. Some, I was just howling at the Lost Boys references, so I ended up making a video. Um, obviously, this is the reunite them after the Lost Boys, so I have got this one the wrong way around. So this should be the Lost Boys, which I'll just leave there for a second. So this is when the two Corys were just shit hot. Like, literally shit hot. They both wanted, I mean, Thalman wanted to play the other role. I think the, 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 the right cast, the white where they are around. I think the only misfortune cast is, I think I would have just cast Jameson Newlander as the other, other friend. Because the other friend is completely missing from it. Um, soundtrack's amazing. Great stunts, great comedy and all synonymous. But it's just been lost. Second Sight brought this out for a brief crack of light on DVD. Like, this, they brought stuff like Mac and Mayo and it just disappeared. Um, this film just needs preserved. Um, just needs brought out on a um, strong Blu-ray uh, label. Um, soundtrack's amazing. Even the bit where Uncle Phil, you know, Shredder himself, is teaching him, or he's, yeah, him's going through his lesson, and he's got the coffee, and he's just like, don't spill my copy. And I've got the soundtrack in the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Jazzy Jeff, or the song playing while Phil's trying to park his car, long before the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Two cents. <sighs> but yeah, quoting. Absolutely caught in the movie. And so that was the, the second outing of the two cores, the first one being this, The Lost Boys. Now this is a bit cool. Holy Grail when it comes to Lost Boys fans, and it's signed by Kiefer Soul on the front, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, Big Box had that for a very long time. Um, just it, like that is a cover. I know the red is more synonymous now with The Lost Boys. I'm not very sure on the 4K. Um, with Warner Brothers, they've reissued. The, uh, there's so many different versions. The Lost Boys are all behind us of the front cover. 
Um, more recently, just like a Billy Worth is on the front cover, and it's like his teeth in the night uh, with orange yellow font. And, um, you know, for years, it's like, it's weird because you've got the picture of Jason Patrick looking back, Kiefer Sutherland, and then you've got like the back Billy Worth, Brooke Hame. Alex went there, Jimmy Gertz there in the middle. And you see t-shirts now where Billy Worth and Brooke are missing. And like, I would understand if they can't get the rights for him and Brooke with them both being past, God bless their souls. But Billy Worth is still alive and Billy Worth is one of the coolest fucking motherfuckers you'll ever meet. So I just don't understand why Billy Worth's missing from the t-shirt. But that should be a steelbook and the new 4K where it's got Kiefer Sutherland and Jason Patrick and name checks them. To me, The Lost Boys is a perfect example of an ensemble cast. You know, Fellman essentially is the star of it because it's alphabetical at the start. But I don't think name checking Kiefer Sutherland and Jason Patrick. Definitely not, you know what I mean? Just no, just no. But yeah, that's the original. Um, hard to read back, red font, you know, it's real when it's got that. A very iconic picture. Kiefer Sutherland all the way around, you know what I mean? It's the Lost Boys and there's one boy, and he's a vampire on the front. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, it's really cool. It was the one thing I'm when, um, I decided, because I've been lucky enough to meet pretty much all the, the cast of the Lost Boys that are still alive, and I was never going to go after one item to be signed. I've seen a few people with some close stuff, but you know, it's why I wouldn't get anything signed when Haim and Fellman are in together, because Haim's gone, bless him, and um, you wouldn't get the whole cast. So, like, Jason Patrick's done me a laser disc, um, Billy Worth's done a few VHSs, so is um, Laddie and stuff like that. There's loads of bits and bobs signed by the guys around you know but yeah that's pretty cool it's a holy grail for lost boys fans that one you must have won your collection not very rare though you do see them creep up in prices and that but see the thing is as well i think is what more, more of the popularity happened him became a lot more popular in england than fellman um so him was massive like him had sell throughs in england and inside the sell throughs were advertising him's films he was fucking huge fellman is just he is like an actor through and through, no matter what people think of him, I thought he was awesome to meet. I thought he's, you know, he's questionable what he's done in the past with some of his films, but when you look at like how iconic he is to the 80s, I mean, Friday the 13th, I will not pay Friday the 13th, that's why they're not there. You know, he's been in so much stuff, um, but he's worked since he was a kid. He's worked in film longer than he can remember being alive, and that, you know what I mean? Like, fair play to him, like, you have, like he's still going. Still going, what an icon. Next up, we've got the weird and the utter wacky. Dream a little dream. Now that's a big box UK, very hard to come by. And that is the search for dream. So going back to when I first, like you see, for example, off the top of my head, you know, I knew who Corey Feldman was and then I was here, well, who's this Corey here? And like, you know, Corey in from the Lost Boys. And then you start seeing like all these films and you start like, getting the book out you know like you didn't have imdb on your phone or access to the internet at that time so you'd use these books in Fellman, it was hard to follow because he would do a lot of supporting roles him would always like be billed at the top but Fellman pops up in loads of films there's a couple coming up there where Fellman's in it for a blink and you miss him um but i was aware of dream a little dream again talking about the corey himself who's Dream a Little Dream was advertised that, but you didn't see it anywhere. I bought the soundtrack in HMV, but like, like, where's the film? Where's the film? Now, Dream a Little Dream has been brought out twice on Sell Through, and I've had to track both of them down. One by uh, the, uh, Vesteron Video International. And what's interesting about Vesteron is they've been recently bringing stuff out in Blu-ray, like The Gate, like The Parents, so, like Wishmaster. So they might, but, First Independent also brought it out in small box sell through to go in with Dream, Dream Machine, Prayer of the Royal Boys, and Fast Getaway. Now, this is an amazing film. It references The Lost Boys. There's a portion of the background. Meredith is absolutely amazing. It's batshit crazy. It's Yoda gone, Yoda, Yoga gone crazy. Um, he is notoriously in it um, for breaking his leg, but Feldman wanted to break free. But like, the chemistry's great. The chemistry's fun. The film's mental. The soundtrack, like, I, for years, did not know what the fuck was going on with this movie. Now, the first time I ever bought it was that, and I got that from Macho Wega. And I was like, ooh, I worked in chopped wood for weeks to actually buy that. And when you buy a big box VHS back in the day, you are talking a lot of money. You're talking, like, anywhere between, like, minimum £20 if you want it off the shelf up to 50 quid and translate that into dollars, whichever. I mean, one of the classic things, the Predator, owning one of the Predators that says 74 95 
on the cover because that's how much per unit so they're not going to go right <laughs> i'm not going to give you any less because i need to replace it if you want that i'm going to have to replace it so you're going to have to meet us in the middle but again when the films get older you're still going to like it's not like you're cleaning them out it's not like blockbusters when you would pick up a copy of speed again months before speed would be released on cell free people don't understand that back in the day vhs's and video shops had like Big box, like that was it. If you wanted to watch a movie, you had to go to a video shop. It wouldn't it'd be months. You've just got to think how long it takes to manufacture a tape. It's not like, boop, burn, out. We've got to record in real time, do you know what I mean? But yeah, that's the first time I ever got it. And as I say, this film and wanted to go I think, steady. I think the film, looking back at it, I always thought it was batshit crazy. But when I watched it more recently, and again, as well, for that other video I just talked about, about the Lost Boys references with a poster being in the background, the way the music's skewed, I love the soundtrack and just like, I didn't give it enough time when I was younger and now I do, I, I watched it and I was like, this is a fucking lost gem of the 80s and it deserves to be on. I would say Arrow, like, deservingly need to bring something like that out, but again, it's restaurants, so it might, but they haven't, I haven't seen them release anything for a while. They've done about eight titles, Return of the Living Dead, part three, and you know, there's a few I can think off the top of my head, like, Nuclear High School 99, 99, something like, something like that. They've done about eight titles max, so they could do it down the line. But very hard to come by, uh, Dream a Little Dream. So I'm happy to own them, the New Zealand and the UK. After that, The Burbs. Bum, bum, bum. One of my favourite film and films. Um, I want. I nearly met Joe Dante last year. And I've got a big Burbs poster in the living room. I, I love the Burbs. I love the score. You know, obviously, the same director as the Goonies. There's a lot of Goonies references. And I've been down the street where the Burbs is filmed. It's on the back lot of Universals. It's a classic old school movie made on the back lot. You know, Tom Hanks before he was big. No pun intended. Absolutely amazing. Um, Feldman just given this opportunity. Even though if you read Feldman's autobi um, autobiography and their choreography. Um, Joe Dante is just like losing his shit over him because he had bubbles in his trailer trashing the place and just became like that terror away, you know what I mean? Um, the best way to put it, if anyone's following me, you know, he was on drugs at the time. He was probably needed a good slap in the right direction. I know it done um, when he did the video and he got that clip of Dick Miller just saying, shut the fuck up, kid, we've got to act, you know. I think Felman you know, you can see, you look at the cast of the Burbs and you look and Corey Feldman, he gets the and Corey Feldman, so he's like, he's got that much stardom. Um, but for a time, this is probably one of the last biggest films he was in, the 80s. And you can see the downfall, but then for him to really correct himself, but again, going back to how this kid has been on camera be like before he even remembers being alive, you know what I mean? It's going to have its knock-on effect, so... Um, but it's amazing. The Burbs is amazing. Um, I originally got this one in a package deal. Um, as I say, never had that in the original. Had that, um, just probably from an eBay. Never had that, so you know what I mean, in the right direction of that. £1.50 per night, extra at the 99 So again, it's pretty cool that it's got the comedy on and stuff like that, because you know what, that is legit. That is seeing its time in a video shop, and that's what's fucking awesome about it. The film's just amazing. So many different versions, but it's always Tom Cruise on the front. Tom Cruise. I fucking hate Tom Cruise as well. Tom Hanks. Right, so we'll go for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. A new re-edition. Right, again, I had some birthday money and picked this up. You don't see a lot of these. It's 2020 Vision. Um, it's the iconic cover. And I know. One outtake. That thing over there, because I've just looked at that in the camera and then looked over there. Um... Who didn't love the turtles? Yeah, it's fucking amazing. And just to find out the film is the voice of Donatello. I have never picked up um, Turtles 3. Again, 30 quid. It's been on my eBay watch list for ages. Um, again, it's just someone else a crop up. Right, again, going back to that package down there. Cropped up. But yeah, the turtles. Had the small box for ages. Uh, what a movie. Um, someone put it on. Um, sport them. Buy now button. I think twenty four ninety nine. Again, they were on for a hundred pound. But again, someone's probably had that since they were a kid, and uh, you know what I mean. Virgin in there, and it was here in days. There's a whole video about that, but that was pretty cool. And that's pretty new to the collection. Um, again, the whole grail won't bow down at big prices because the end of the day, the day you bow down and pick that up on eBay, you'll find it in a charity shop. And I'll tell you that. Now that story would have been great to go into that one, but that one there. Is this going to sit right there on the edge? You can see what it's called. 
and I found that in a charity shop, but that is the last one. And if you don't know what that is, you, well, you obviously know what it is, but yeah, that is again, you go in a charity shop one day, you never know what you're gonna find. Next up, definitely in the wrong place, but we're talking about the downfall of Thelman here in the 90s. Scott Stormtrooper here. I never clicked for, clicked for ages, absolutely ages, Stormtrooper. I just went, oh yeah, Feldman movie. Like, I'm not a Star Wars fan. And one of the most famous characters of Star Wars is Stormtrooper. Just never clicked with me. Um, this is like a global, this is global all over. And now there's an actor in there. It's this guy in the back. He plays the bad boyfriend for a time. He's class in it. You really think he's an absolute prick in it. So he does a really good job. This is literally, you walk in a global video and there it was. Again, you pick that up and this is where you discover Ah, and you're like, fucking hell, Beryl, can I own this, please? <laughs> Beryl used to work in Global. So basically, this reunites um, Zach Gallian from the Gremlins and he gets Anne Corey Feldman. This movie is in the same location as Biodome. So basically, if you're a massive fan of Biodome like I am, watching this, it just fucking melts your head. <laughs> just the same locations for you, and you're like, ah. Feldman turns up with an eye patch. As one of the lackeys, not the main star, just like, ah, and yeah, um, there's a bit where he jumps through the window and gets shot, and he's like, I'm dead. And he's just, it, it's, it's bad. It's really bad. And that's nowhere in the right place at all because that should have, like, like, that's where this should have been. So yeah, we'll, um, we'll just put that one in the end until we get back there. We jumped well ahead in time there. Round trip to heaven, Zach Gallian and Corey Feldman reunited from the Grandlands again for the first time. I never knew this episode released. This popped up on eBay. I was like, fucking hell. Bye, straight away. Didn't hesitate. 2020 vision. Um, Hi-fi stereo. Gnarly film. Gnarly film. Um, as I say, it's great to have it in there. Um, Feldman, like, really coming to his own. Obviously, a bit of a womanizer in it. It's got some really cheesy bits, mush tasks, the bonking clown bit. I was like, what the fuck? There's a bit with the clown and all kinds of weird stuff in it. Um, pretty weird, but again, for the collection, I, I, I obviously when you're going back to like getting these books, when you were thinking, Corey, you go through all the actors and it's got like, was it the Hall Garths or the uh, Harrod, something like that, give me H, you know, you got them every year, came out like about that fucking size. Um, Round Trip to Heaven was one of them, but I never knew it was released in England again. It's one of the things, now you do, you know, so that's for the collection and that's where that should have been. Right, um, we're a bit right, I'm going to go for here, for next. You want to talk about a flash of the pan cameo, Maverick. Picked Maverick up quite recently um, for about £5 again on eBay. Um, when you're searching and you want <clears throat> films, you've got to remember sometimes people not realise well, you won't realise Feldman's in there unless you can really realise, but it's the same sometimes. Like Murphy's Romance, for example, like you would search Corey, hit him and see what came up, but uh, Murphy's Romance, you type it in, there it was, just sitting there, £10 delivered, you know what I mean? Two cents. So Richard Donner, director of The Goonies Lost, and producer of The Lost Boys, yes, Paul Ray. Um, obviously, essentially, Lethal Weapon 5 in the, in, in the West, really, because um, there's a cameo where Danny Glover turns up to rob the bank and Mel Gibson looks at him and it's even the saxophone jingle from Lethal Weapon and in the background Danny Glover's henchman is Corey Feldman so it's a couple of quick scenes again big box heavily trailered back in the day very long film every time I watch Maverick I think 121 minutes uh, just always advertised with a yellow font at the bottom so we're doing great here right now we're going to delve into a bit midway we'll go for this lipstick camera um again this is something that you know was creeping around online um it's bought from it this looks like it came from it come from blockbuster this Feldman on the back's got the mitch laddy hat going on um basically much an eventful film um Feldman just plays like the Ann character meets his demise pretty much early on in the movie it's got quite a few famous people it's all about like them leaving a camera in and catching a murder on camera. Um, and there's a camera up in the ceiling and stuff like that. The only way I've ever seen it is on VHS and I have not rewound it. And that's what I was on about there, Blockbuster. So someone, it's put 24.99 when they probably paid 1.99 on it. 
So, but I would, again, they don't know. I just wanted it for my collection. It was pretty awesome. You don't see many of them on. You do see um, a couple of different versions out and about, but 20th century film. Um, like weird covers and stuff like that, but yeah, lipstick camera. Next up, first independent. I always said this is the movie that um, Haim didn't want to do, so Feldman did it. It just, Feldman just looks so out of place in this. He's wearing like what Haim would wear. Um, Looking enough to own a VHS video shop poster of this. Um, I've always had it on DVD from America, and in America, um, you see Feldman screaming in the eye of the uh, skull. But like, I never knew it was released. Again, this is ones that just creep up. Like fucking hell, that was released, and you think like. Of all the, the video shops I trailed around, not just in the northeast of England, um, but all the way around New Zealand and stuff like that, you know, like, like again, you just like, what the fuck? I mean, every time you would uh, go somewhere, you would go into a video shop and like, oh, you remember? Like, no, but like, what have you got? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And like, there's one there. It's just like, I didn't know that until I got it on eBay. Um, don't see many of it. It's first independence, so again... You know, a lot of him movies released in the UK were first independent. Whoever was at first independent was definitely aware of who Corey Haim and Corey Feldman were. But how many first independent movies can you say that you've actually seen come past VHS? Mortal Kombat's one, Dumb and Dumber's two. Like literally, first independent. Like there just seems the catalog just disappeared. But yeah, that was voodoo. After that, let's just get Scuba School out of the way. Also known as Last Resort. Um, this is so, you've seen this everywhere. Um, obviously, I turned around and seen this Corey and Corey Feldman. This is the one they wanted the big comeback from. Um, National Lampoons at the time had not really did a, a whoop whoop. Now, while we talk about National Lampoons, we'll get National Lampoons Little Weapon 1. So, obviously, Animal House and all its vacation movies. This is one of the best spoof movies ever made. Feldman makes a very brief uh, appearance when Samuel Jackson shoots up with the guys. You can have one of these in American, and you know, because he starts shouting it up and it comes out, I think, Japanese. And then uh, Feldman's the guy who stands up and shoots the bullet. Um, I recently picked this up. Um, again, you picked these up. This was um, a couple of quid. There was one on, uh, there was one up to buy, and then one for a couple of quid. But again, going back to. Like that was always back in the day, and you would watch it and you'd fucking hell, there's Corey Film. <laughs> but he would, you know what I mean? He would, but again, going back to that big fucking book, I had one of them books, you know. Um, going back to that big book, you would open, go down actors, they wouldn't fucking say Corey Feldman's in that because he's fucking, you know what I mean? The cast, the cast is massive in that. But again, when coming back to Scooby School and the, him and Feldman and make that free picture deal, which was blown away in Dream Little Dream 2. Um, you know, they had a lot of hope for that, and it's mental. It's fucking mental. Now, going back to that reference video of The Lost Boys, I'd watch this. Dread Zeppelin's fucking amazing. You can just see the Last Resort poster in the background, like yellow. That is like, that went up in the last video, because like, I watched it, and I was like, I fucking love this movie. It's fucking ridiculous. It's stupid. Feldman's costume changes, they've got the whole split down it. But like the whole bit where you stop doing that, you've already done it, the Lost Boys, there's so much tongue and cheek. And you just see they've just had a lot of fun. As I say, the artwork's dramatically changes from its American counterpart. You know, pretty much America, last resort over here, Scuba School. Um and you do actually see covers of that on DVD where it says last resort. Um but yeah, big box sell through 12, you know. So this came along the, again, the 12 era. There was a lot of stuff that made straight for 12. I mean, I don't think that was ever going to be seen in the pictures, but it was huge. It just flopped. But yeah, National Lampoons. All right, so we're over halfway there. Um, we do have a special guest in the video, by the way, and it's on Hire the Dog, who hasn't made an appearance, which is pretty cool. Um, again, next up, Legion. Afron Jones owns this. Hello, Afron. Um, seeing the shelf in the background, some video footage. He's recently uh, uh, cameoed in one of my other videos. He, look at him, he's got Legion. So, yeah, um, on the front it is Corey Feldman on there. Um, it literally, it's like a horror version of Red Dwarf. It's literally all just looks like it takes place in a dingy, darky warehouse, but it's meant to be in space and there's a creature. This is another global one. Um, again, you would discover Corey Feldman's name on the front cover. Dirty Dozen meets the Predator in Dead Space Terror. Whoa, THS the wrong way around the region. Um, recently have watched this again. Um, it's not amazing. Again, all red uh, red dwarf references. How it's done there. Uh, I think 
Falman's the tech expert. He lasts quite a way through it, like. Then he gets murdered off. Some really bad cheesy acting, but yeah, a legion. There's not that many of the low budget ones I don't have. It's more the bigger ones. Again, the two Friday the 13th, the Goonies, being the two big ones. A Fox and the Hound, maybe. Uh, but again, this isn't showcasing the small counterparts. Um, if you go down Lonely Tree's channel, I have went down this. Well, not this in deep and sitting down on the desk and stuff, but like I have ranted away. Um, but the small box, you do pick up stuff like that you don't get on the big box VHS, like the Fox and the Hounds one. Next up, a dangerous place, also known as No Surrender. I swooped this for 99 pence on eBay. I felt so sorry. <laughs> Sidekicks has a very similar cover with Chuck Norris in. I always remember seeing this um, back in the day, and there is Fellman right there. Not a bad role, I think, for Fellman. Um, obviously, this is referenced, obviously, in um, Dickie Roberts, where he says he don't know karate. Corey Fellman build on there, Marco with Ted Jan Roberts. Um, obviously, a karate kid clone, proper clone. Uh, but I think Fellman's great as a, um, you know, like he plays the bad guy, and I think he does it really well. Um, and I watched it and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's actually on Amazon Prime as a dangerous place. Uh, but I always remember that back in the video shops. It was heavily distributed and to pick that up for 99 pence was awesome. Um, so it's cool. Next up, I know Slanch TV in America. A Dan, who, when he's not hanging out with Vanilla Ice lately, <laughs> has uh, made a video about this. This is one of Feldman's weirdest performances. Um, picked this up on eBay. Um, Again, Guild video, isn't it? Yeah, Guild video. Corey Feldman, he is everywhere. Goes to the dark side in this, man. Real dark side. Brendan Fraser, the passion of darkly noon, fucking dark shit. Um, Feldman is a good actor. You just need to give him the right script and director. But, like, going back to him once again, being like remembering like more filming on his before he's you know what I've said before don't you he, like he's been filming more than he remembers his own life um y if you got someone like Quentin Tarantino to get a hold of him and go right now deliver this but he needs cast in the right role I think he would really surprise people um but he's also like it, it doesn't have to be a, such a dramatic role I think he can deliver that you just need to look at some of his other stuff his comical stuff really good you know, this, the, like, the pantomime stance, I think he's really good in that. It's, unfortunately, you know, he hasn't had that much bigger hits, you know, really. But, this, you know, he's 50, 50 last week. I tell you what, he looks fucking brilliant for 50. Literally. Now, fair play. Again, dark film, again, quite available, that one. Next up, should have been a while ago, I imagine. Just want to sneak down there. Blown away. Watched this a few weeks ago, um, turned this face on, um, obviously the counterpart it is, um, I don't think any of these have been, it's one of the very few flip covers, so that cover is on the flip, um, very loud from cover, um, obviously notoriously known for him and his girlfriend Nicole Eggert being a couple at the time, another film, again makes perfect sense right, he's a perfect sense about it, film it in a ski resort out of season, you've got the whole hotel for the crew, and you go around film, uh, filming it and making a story of it, have sex scenes with the two. That's a nice duck. Um, he my love, I promise not to tell. When I watch this, there's a bit where they go to the party for the first time, and Feldman's just busting out his fucking moves. He's like, hey, you see something you like? And like, <laughs> he's called Wes in it. And it's the song in the background, he my love. I don't know why it's subliminally stuck in my head. I don't know the fucking lyrics, I know the beat. And it just goes on where he's going around and he's got the fucking cocktail and like looking for the girl. I think it's a great film. Cheesy. Absolutely cheesy. Um, low budget. Again, I think they're great in it. I think it's great. And as I say, it's been a version. It got released on DVD in the UK. Um, but recall quite quickly because they misprinted it. It actually has two age 18s on it. And no Corey Hame. <laughs> Corey Hame just gets shafted from the front cover. It's a Corey, Corey film. It's mush. So yeah, um, no, I think they kept. I think they had great chemistry. I think they had absolutely fantastic. Not to play brothers, like they're playing like I don't know the step brothers and all that. But yeah, whatever. Right, we're talking about reunion as well. Dream little dream team. Um, the cover's different. Have you ever seen the American cover? He just looks like, like how are you looking? And Feldman's like. 
you know, they're trying to reconnect the original. And that's what we got in the UK. And it, I think it's pretty cool. I still remember seeing this in their titles video shelf years after this came out. And Dream a Little Dream 2. And like, it's all about glasses swapping, but it's first independent. So they would have swooped in and dropped that out. But yeah, always fun memories of that. That's one I was like, right, can I buy this? It, that would have cost us like 25 quid, like straight off the shelf. No one would have even rented it when I got it. I was like, that's mine. That's mine. Right, back to Stormtrooper there. Next up, massive uh, thank you to Jan, Brit's mom. And there's Born Bad. Um, a Dan again, massive. Check out Slaunch TV. They've done loads of uh, Corey Fell and stuff. Um, got to, he got to work with Corey Feldman recently this, last year now? This year, last year. He did a video about Born Bad. Um, and he actually, um, he did a video, fucking it was in our video, Jesus Christ. Um, I got this given to I got this off um, Brit's mum. Corey Film gets name checked on the back. Born bad. Um, and it Dan actually fills in the gaps because this is all in French. Um, I haven't talked about it much, but Corey him and Corey Film have a massive fan base in Europe, especially in Germany and stuff like that. There's loads of films that you come out and they've got like, again, Die Goonies is a typical one, but they had a massive following. Um, this has never seen the light of day in England in any shape or form. From what I've seen of it and what I've seen of a Dan's review, it looks great. I really want to watch it, but um, I watched um, film. I mean, we was living abroad a lot. I'm used to watching random shit in foreign languages, but um, I watched Trading, which I got on DVD, and it came from somewhere over Asia. And uh, he was in it for like... <laughs> fucking five seconds well give, give, give him two minutes max and I watched it all and it was all in like weird like our language and then I seen the options and it was actually could play in English I was like you fucking idiot but again there's no options like that with VHS is there but yeah anyway right next up Meatballs 4 also known as in England summer vacation first independent yet again um I've never seen, I know Bill Murray's in the first Meatballs. Meatballs is not some of that's been very popular in the UK to have this to be number four. Um, I know there's a few posters been knocking around. Previously viewed tape, 1599. This has been Slum Beach to fuck. Uh, this is like mid of the road. Um, again, first independence. So, you know, you could probably take games, movies, and Feldman's movies and go and write. They weren't working together again. That's what they did. Um, would that have worked better being a ham one? I don't know, as I say, they're all just, he just keeps on working, do you know what I mean? Keeps on working. Right, I've left this one purposely last but not least because Bordello of Blood has recently been released on DVD again. It got released on Blu ray about five years ago, then the same companies brought it out on DVD randomly. Um, I first seen this in New Zealand in Video Village. Same players I got watches from back in the day, same place I was wandering around outside last year. Um, Bordello of Blood, I remember coming out and knowing that Feldman was in it, so I was aware of like what Feldman was up to again. I was, you know, I had access to the internet at that point, so you know, production Bordello of Blood. Um, it came out, it flopped, it was meant to be a trilogy, it got a pictures release. I love the pun on like Corey Feldman pretty much playing the Lost Boy in it, essentially. Another Lost Boy, so I should have really maybe mentioned that in that video I did, but like, as I say, like, there's enough time to do more videos like that. I remember my dad. Now, bear in mind, my dad lives in New Zealand and um, has had little to do with my childhood. I was like, no, I'm going to watch that before I let you watch it. I was like, what the fuck, man? I was about 16 at the time, you know, to fucking 18. Uh, I mean, but he's going, well, I'm not sure we should be watching that. I'm like, motherfucker, like, no. Nah. Um, but yeah, it got released on the UK. i never actually seen this in the UK. Um, someone I've picked up. Um, not that long ago as well, so it was pretty cool to get a hold of that. So that that to me is one of the last Corey Haim ones because that's like '96 ish. Um, the drips and drabs are picking up, and last but not least, at the very end, uh, Turtles, Rock and Roll High School, and Last Resort on small box American VHSs. I'm convinced that I had the Lost Boys on the small box VHS and the Burbs. I was convinced. I'm convinced I've got the burbs, you know, and that. I don't know why I believe that, but not. But anyway, whatever. Right, so, ladies and gentlemen, Corey Fallon. I'm surprised you guys know Rock and Roll High School. That's a new classic. You know, when we were. Oh, you did! Oh, 
So there you go, there's Corey Feldman, you've seen him at Horicon, he was awesome, and I spent two days, met him only two days, it was quite, it was awesome, he was down with words, there's plenty of stuff on the channel of his meeting Corey, but like, I got this sign in, like, I don't think he's massively into the, the, the time, because he's signed right across his mush, um, but the story of like, you talk about replacing that collection and finding stuff on eBay, and like, one good one's got a good story here and there. Um, there was used to be a bit, um, charity shop we used to go on there and you would find some really nice gems in there and this one day there was just nothing. And I think they had about three bookcases and normally the last bookcase at the very, it's all kids, like the Disney ones and stuff and at the very bottom shelf of that. But you know what, one more shelf that we fuck all on here. Right in the back corner, that. I never knew that had been released. Um, I chased that one for a couple of years. It got released um, on Hollywood DVD um, very early on in v um, DVDs where they had nothing on the discs and stuff. And there it is, squidgy box. I've seen a couple on eBay, um, but when I met Thelman, I says, Look, I says, I want to get the birthday signed. He lost his mind when he seen the birthday. Um, I got him to sign that and I got him to sign the Lost Boys 3 poster, which is behind us. And then that. Like, I, would, I would never get anything signed of the two Corys because I know what I'm saying and when you look at all them going right which VHS would you get them to sign um, where is essentially the star and that had a story because that is a find again it was like it's a hard decision it's a hard decision but yeah right so in the outtakes we'll find out what's in the package now who's smiling now who's smiling now who's smiling Dun dun dun! <laughs> Hello! I should have had that there all this time, shouldn't I? Uh, maybe's, maybe's. <laughs> we'll have this, yeah. Thanks, Adam, once again for that. There go. Right, so that's Ed Giovanna. Right, so, if I was to tell you there was two VHSs in this, what would you think was in it after all that? Hi, girl, come on. I wish there was a camera pointing at her right now. She's just done the whole thing. <laughs> Creeping around the corner. Come on. It's a fire extinguisher. Do not chew that. Right, okay. So, Hira might join us. Hira might not. I need to get into this. So, again, what do you think is in this? Now, these have come all the way from Australia. Um, I spoke with this guy. He's got a cool collection. Like, literally. It, it, it's almost like, you know, I've met someone online who's like me. And you look at what he's selling. And it's fucking awesome. Some awesome stuff. And obviously he's biting the bullet, he's selling up finally, but what's it gonna be? So I picked two. Um he does have a few more on there. Um I decided to go for two. Um fear of a customs charge, I didn't get it, but it's a postage. Postage is a mental. The postage costs more than the two VHSs, which is insane. Let's have a look. So which two? Now, they're not ones that I don't have. So it's not a Friday the 13th, it's not a... <sighs> You've already seen them in some form in this video. Well packaged though, um, hopefully they'll have the ones, other ones that I were after. Um, and maybe see how much pay this goes this month. Um, but again, it's the shelf as well. The shelf. I rearranged them all last time I did the two Corey's video, the Corey video, Corey here one. And they've been nice at order, and now it's going out of the way. There we go. I'm going to leave them like that. Awesome. Right, okay. So, back to much work in New Zealand, 96. Um, walking around, small little video shop. There was one I've seen, and I've always had fond memories of it. <laughs> Starring Corey Fallon from The Lost Boys, Burbs, Stand By Me, Goonies, and Edge of Honor. And Honor is spelled H-O-N-O-U-R, unlike over here. And it is Rock and Roll High School forever. Big box, Australian. Now, like its counterparts of the other ones, like License to Drive, um, it's huge, look at that. 
happening and that takes some space up on a fucking shelf. That is literally like... Dan's just probably fell off his seat in America because Dan is a massive fan. Me and Dan met because of our love for this over the internet, you know what I mean? There's not many videos on the internet about rock and roll high school and Dan, a uh, Dan, sorry, has made an amazing documentary about this movie. And I was winding him up this morning because the package came and I had to go to work, so. <laughs> but again, he lives in America, so. Um, home video, Star Paris. Please, after use of a minor, adjust your tracking controls. Rock and Roll High School, forever and ever. One of the weirdest and wackiest films, but absolutely fucking hilarious. Did get a UK release on DVD as a double pack. Um, hi, Mr. Smith. Um, again, it's just fucking mental. It's absolutely mental. I've laughed at that film so much, like the whole Vader and the fucking electric fence. It never got released in UK. I have had that in my hand in New Zealand. That's my first experience. So that was the one where, right, need that now i'll tell you this right now i tapped out because of one of the ones he does have is fast getaway and it's pink uh, i think he's got a few more but it, it was a toss-up between the, that was definite and the other one is this it is dream a little dream 2 and um, it's in a hard box um which is really cool it's fucking awesome because like i'm a massive that chase of dream a little dream as a kid to have its New Zealand counterpart. And it's from Video Easy, which is a big train, and it's Fellman. Obviously he's got the sticker over his face, and Haim has just completely looked baffled. Um, Dream Little Dream 2, Corey Haim, Corey Fellman. Um, it, it is quite crusty on the back. Um, look at that, man. Video Easy, Dream Little Dream 2. I just never thought of like, checking this. See, again, going on the search engines and stuff, you don't normally end up um, on, um, like the other side of the internet in America, like America and all that stuff. Like I won't pay American stuff now. Um, I tapped out of a Corey Haim. I mean, to be honest with you, it was a couple of weeks later. It was this was about the same price, but the time, like the last month I tapped out, it was like, pray the roller boys fast get with one and two, and I think it was blown away. And I was that say it was going to cost nearly a hundred quid. Tapping postage, customs charges, a, a, probably additional like customs import charges. Fucking not worth it. So them too. Now this came pretty fast. I probably ordered them last month. Um, and that was my treat from last month's pay really. Um, as I say, I will purchase from the guy again just for the collection, but I would have to be very cautious because that's gonna be some fucking, I mean, it's huge compared to that. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, I've been Steve Monkey Mason. Um, as I say, him, I would love to see him in one big more movie. He took, like if you watch the film The Birthday, I think it was great and that. He just needs the right script and direction. Um, but what a life in films and I'm honoured to fucking be collecting these, you know what I mean? It's that's the hunt now, physical media. I mean I witnessed Record Store Day yesterday and people queuing for albums and stuff like that and there and then own it. I would do shit like that for VHS. But like the thing with VHS is, especially the big boxes, these have a history. These have been on the shelf. These have been on a shelf in a different country. These have been, you know, taken home, watched free round by hundreds and hundreds of people. And in 2021, they're still alive. Like our mate Nipper here. So for now, I'm in Steam Monkey Mason. Check out Lonely Tree Entertainment for all kinds of things. Two Corys, literally two Corys, and especially Corey Feldman himself. Uh, especially check out the birthday review if you want to see that. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye for now. Who are you? Hello. Hiya. Right, go now.